So, yeah, hi. Um, one thing first, I'm like super nervous right now, and that means possibly two things. Either I'm talking like really fast, or I forget everything I want to say. So, <laughs> if, <laughs> so if, if I start talking too fast, please give me just like a waiver or whatever. Cool. So, um, about this talk, um, this is pretty basic stuff. Um, I hope I don't bore you. Um, it's in two parts. The first part is, um, in general, how Node does multi-threading or threading at all, and what tools uh, Node offers you to play with that. Yeah, me, um, I'm working at Figo. We are hiring two. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> um, yeah, we provide access to banks all over Europe. We're expanding right now, and we're really, really, really hiring. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, and we do pretty cool notes now. So, then, let's get started. Who would agree to this statement? Uh, uncertainty? <laughs> okay, I, I, I hope for more hands, to be honest. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm boring you after all, but, we, but we'll see about that. <clears throat> okay, I, I start at, at the very basics. What Node was made for is solving a very simple problem, blocking IO. That means the problem is exactly here. What does your program do while it does blocking things? So, and in general, the answer is nothing. It just waits, sits there, and whenever whatever is done is ready, it continues. You can mitigate that by obviously threading as one possible solution to like give the impression that your program does something else while it waits. So, but there are some downsides. Multi-threading is actually kind of hard. There are a lot of downfalls and I don't say there, are, there aren't solutions for that, but there are certain things you have to keep in mind. If you're working at a very low level, and I'm not talking Node.js, I'm talking general here, um, you run into problems like shared memory or memory allocation, which makes things really tricky, especially if your uh, program grows more complex. I'm talking fast right now, right? Okay. <clears throat> and inter-process communication is something that not always is provided to you. So sometimes you have to make sure that your different processes or threads or whatever are able to talk with each other and in the worst case manage a, sh a shared state which can be like really hard if you think about stuff like race conditions. What if two separate processes try to access one state element at the same time or like you need to make sure that they do it in a certain, um, what's the word? Order, Order right. <laughs> oh, sorry. So, and one problem uh, which arises, which, sol uh, which Node solves, is if you have some kind of a package management, how do you ensure that your threads <coughs> stay safe while you use other programmers' code? which might not suffice for all the different, um, as I mentioned, I forget it, stuff, um, requirements of your code. So you're loading one package which kind of solves your problem and suddenly you're in big trouble. So what does Node do to solve these problems? A single thread. So and a single thread is kind of super beautiful here because it abstracts all of this shit away. Either you don't have it and you don't have to worry about it or 
Node does it for you. And Node does it for you in a very specific way uh, by using an event loop. That means um, whatever under the hood happens, it somehow gets to you via the event loop. Does anyone, anyone is fam familiar with the notion of an event loop? Awesome. So that's a very like basic diagram of how this works. You have this event loop at the top level, which you can access and which gives you certain events, which is implemented on top of libuv, which then uses POSIX async syscalls to do the actual work. And the actual work is done in a thread pool. So what Node basically does is you do something I.O. related or sys related, it froze in, in the thread pool and just waits for it. And then at one point, whatever you're trying to do is ready and it goes back up and the event loop tells you, hey, something happened. So instead of doing like blocking stuff, we can do this. And I know you all know this, but this is actually a very powerful concept because in this case, you have to wait. And whenever something happens, or, or you have to wait for something to happen and then can react to it. But in this case, you tell your interpreter, I want to do something, no does it, and you can forget about it. So, and nothing ever blocks or stops your program from running. Whatever happens hereafter will just continue without any time uh, passing. And then when your um, whatever action is ready, you just register a callback. And I know that sounds like, okay, yeah, we know callbacks. And I know you know callbacks, but this is a very powerful notion. We can tell our system without knowing about any threading or whatsoever, when what you're doing is done, please continue at this point in the code and execute whatever I want to do with that. And Node.js takes care of the rest. So the notion of Node.js running in a single thread is kind of wrong because multi-threading is already built in into Node. So in most cases, you don't have to worry about it at all. It, you can't say for sure that this part of the code will execute on the same core as this part of the code. And you don't have to, and that's the beauty uh, of it. That makes Node a very, very efficient system. So yeah, questions so far? Cool, how can you use that? Node provides actually a shitload of tools to do awesome stuff with that. And it actually solves all of the problems one way or the other I mentioned uh, a few slides back. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so the base of it all is Spawn. Spawn is the simplest way to run whatever you want. So, and the first cool thing about this is you have super, uh, or like a lot of control about the runtime environment. So if you say, um, want to execute another program and access that input, or no, no sorry, sorry, sorry I'm, I'm going too far. Um, you want to execute another program. You have a lot of control of how this program runs. So you can control the current working directory if that matters, or even set user IDs. So Node is very, very, very um, aware of how a standard Unix system works. And the cool part is, it also uses the same language. So this should, if you're a Unix hacker, this should be very, very familiar to you. And this is just like half of the options you can actually pass in to, to, to spawn. <laughs> right, the second thing was like breathing. <laughs> so, and the other cool thing is accessing 
a running subprocess state is like the easier, easiest thing in Node.js. This whole um, adding a callback to an event thing is common all over Node.js and also for subprocesses. So all, all the cool code magic you can do in general with Node, you can also do with subprocess. You don't have to worry about memory allocation, Node does that for you. You don't have to worry about um, how long your process runs or when your process runs or if it runs or whatever. You have the simple event system to access everything you need and to control every, everything uh, regarding this. Yep. <laughs> um, may, maybe I'm like faster than I thought. <laughs> okay, um, the second one, and again, Every, every uh, one of these commands is built on top of spawn. Um, and all the other ones make it easier for you to run like special uh, sub-processes. Where exec and exec file are used to um, run commands on the host system and are especially made for it. And the difference is exec spawns a shell. You can even control which shell it spawns and run the command in the shell, or just omit the shell if you don't need it, and run it directly. So, and you can do pretty cool things with that. Because um, one of the greatest criticisms about JavaScript is, JavaScript is, when it comes to heavy computing, a pretty slow language. So, um, that might be on, not really on the plus side, but if you look at this, it doesn't really matter. Um, exchange git for whatever cool C program uh, you have to do whatever, num number crunching, for example. So you just can interface any program from within your Node.js process to whatever it is supposed to do and get your data back. And it's as easy as that. And you can make it even easier if you use, um, I just used the exact same command in the sync version uh, for one of my command line tools, and just to get, uh, get the git, uh, local git username. So I said exit file sync, trim the whole uh, output, and that's it. If I make sure, uh, before I make sure git is installed, that's like one line to interface a different program on a host system, get some output, and work with it. Easy as that. If you want instead uh, work with node processes, you of course have node 4, which works basically the same, but adds an additional benefit. IPC, inter-process communication. That's on this level, you can't do like anything with it, but you can do pretty cool stuff. One example might be um, if you have a web server, you can use this uh, mechanism to hand down the request object to a child process, which is like, pretty amazing. And that comes built in. That doesn't mean that there, there aren't better solutions or a more efficient solution, but <coughs> especially for small programs, this is more than enough. So, or think about, um, sending stats from your child process to your master process to keep track of how your sub-processes uh, sub pro uh, processes perform. So many pieces in that sentence. Mm -hmm. Super easy possible. And last but not least, um, cluster module. Especially designed, works exactly the same as fork, but especially designed to solve same, same similar task. If Best example, web server. You have one master process which spawns a web server, number of CPU child processes which do the heavy lifting, and then you just hand down your request object from your main process to your child process. End of story. That's it. How many of you have used this or actually used this? <laughs> Uh, 
don't know. That, that's not what I expected. Maybe I should have prepared more in-depth stuff on this. Okay, uh, yeah, maybe we can get more into this afterwards. Um, the cool thing here is that's exactly all the code you need to distribute your program into multiple processes. So besides now taking care of like the underlying stuff, that's all you need to have fault tolerance in your program, for, especially for web servers. Uh, what if your single thread goes down? Your whole program sucks. So use this like six lines of code and you have fault tolerance. Whenever something crashes your program, there still, I don't know, number of CPUs minus one more. So, and if you do a little bit more, you can even add stuff like graceful restart or whatever to it. So I, I see many question marks on faces right now. Well, <laughs> any questions? Did I lost you somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a question, but that could also go afterwards. Okay, Af afterwards is not far away. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. I mean, do do I have to talk about this part if you haven't used it? That's maybe discouraging. There are some dangers in multiprocessing, also with Node, but that's kind of a special case. So I would say, let's get here and talk about this. Thank you. Um, like um, some paradigms like 12 factor, for example, encourage the use uh, to scale over processes and not over threads, um, mm -hmm. which I think might be one of the reasons why so few people use it. Um, do you, do you have, have some examples from, from uh, like the real world where, where you work with um, quark or clustering inside node applications, um, opposed to, for example, if distributing work through Brokers or through whatever. Yes. Um, let's do this. Um, So this is a package I'm, I'm working on right now, <laughs> which um, uses a cluster module or augments a cluster module to do cool stuff. Um, this is still a work in progress. <clears throat> uh, so where to start? Okay, maybe this is a bad example. Um, but what it basically does is um, the cluster module, uh, let's, let's say we have four CPUs. So you do this whole um, number of CPUs and four that many processes thing. And let's say one of, one of these processes dies. So you're left with three processes. So um, what you can do here is um, obviously add an automatic restart for the missing process, but you can also add like graceful restart features that um, you do some code change in the, uh, in the back end, and then you say to your cluster, okay, something changed, please like acknowledge this change. So and then it takes the first cluster, restart that one, or it waits before all connections and whatever it's doing is done, restarts this one and then goes to the next and does the same. So while your program in the old state is still running and like serving requests or something like that, you can 
update the program without uh, shutting the program down. So that makes for a zero downtime server. So it's kind of like the rolling update of Kubernetes. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. Or that, that may, maybe rephrase. Um, I, I would agree to uh, what, what you said that Node.js is not perfect for number crunching, or not very good actually at number crunching. Um, and where do you see the, the, the uh, niche for multi-threading Node.js, or multi-threading inside the application, not just the I.O., um, requiring that, but not requiring heavy lifting languages like C or anything that is compiles into assembly? I think um, the major advantage is uh, what I just told it. It gives you a lot of control on how, how your application behaves under certain, cer uh, certain circumstances, especially when your program shuts down for unforeseeable reasons. So, and having a mechanism, an automatic mechanism to um, limit the damage that uh, this is able to do. Like you mentioned PM2 does essentially the same, but it's actually not that hard to implement that yourself. So um, that's the first point, control over your program or how your program runs. And the second part is um, it's when you get used to using other programs with your node program, it's like super addictive. It's so easy to get little pieces of information from, I don't know, wherever in your system and incorporate that in your application. Um, I don't have a really good example right now, but the git username uh, for um, yeah, or git email would make more sense to have like control of how your program is version controlled, like the matrix. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, that would I think that that's the main two reasons I use this. Any more questions? Yeah. But I'm interested in you said that you can spawn different processes and can exit them. Is there some kind of um, manager or broker that brings it all together and how should this be well shaped? Do you have any examples for this? Yeah, this, um, the cool thing about Node is everything is evolved uh, or everything <laughs> evolves around the event system. So um, what Whatever version you uh, or whatever tool of Node you use to um, uh, whatever tool you use uh, to like access or um, create another process, it's always uh, an evented object you get back. So you can like call back the hell out of it and. That's, um, in my opinion, that's a fundamental concept of Node. Uh, Node is an async event, uh, evented system and should be used as such. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, I was thinking about more in concepts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was um, asking myself whether it would be, do you need this, like this um, main broker where you, from where you um, do all the things? Yeah, I, um, I think this kind of broker yeah, is, is exactly the event loop. I think that you know, in Java, um, I know there's something where you can find threads and you can say, okay, thread this and thread this like this and handle this object in this thread. And I'm asking myself whether it would be good to implement something like this in JavaScript, you know, where you have like this multiple CPU uh, and you bring down your processes there. but like in Java, you need this um, slot machine that runs and um, puts them into the, um, no? Mm, I, I don't really get the connection, to be honest. No, maybe it helps. Uh, first of all, this is not method threading. This is yeah. method processing. So it's uh, clearly there are two complete separated process processes. Um, broker is basically the operating system. 
different maybe. Um, so it creates a, a sub process uh, that is attached here. So it's a, it's, it's a child process, so it's a main process style, child process style. Um, and what the system does is it creates two uh, three, cha three channels. So this basically it's Unix three input output three for main socket. Here is an R this bus here. That is, it's, it's the same communication channel which is here using the shell the CPU, like where we give LS some directory pipe. This is exactly that. This is the pipe thing. Um, and maybe this was my uh, problem with the concept because yeah. I was using Java with threading, yeah. and I was asking myself whether it's okay to uh, enable or to share some kind of local yeah. language. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, they probably just don't share anything. Yeah, yeah, I, I tried to try to like boil boil it down to to simple concepts and sorry, sorry we gotta go mix that up. And also, don't look at this code. That's bad. <laughs> yes. Um, I think maybe also what you were mentioning is like actually replaced by this uh, loop that we just talked about at the very beginning. And I think I saw some article about it, maybe even on the North website, um, where they have a nice picture about this. Like, where you can really imagine that a small piece of code is executed, and then it asks, did something new happen to like my no, okay, I execute another piece of code. Did something happen? And then you get a key. So yeah, something happened. And then node starts to like process all the things that are related to it um, after one needs to, after one another. So um, this is kind of how you can imagine how all this works. Right. Yeah, and maybe as a takeaway, I only can encourage you to watch uh, Ryan Dahl's introductory uh, talk about Node.js. It's like super eye-opening and he talks about how he envisions Node.js and what I talked initially about what what kind of problem Node solves and do it. It's, I don't know, short to an hour worth your time, I promise. Yes. Have you have any experience in sub-process in, inside a Docker container? How how does the program um, adapt to a containerized environment? Um, Is there some pitfalls we should know or something like that? I mean, the, the, the main pitfall is, uh, is I think, and I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, that uh, especially Docker containers like simpl simplify your architecture uh, in terms of how many cores you have. So that might be different 
or if you, especially if you're testing, there, that this might not be the ideal scenario to test stuff regarding multiprocessing, especially if you use like the uh, number of CPUs thing. But I, I think beside that, I haven't recognized any, any downsizing. Okay. All right, then. Thank you.